Hey y'all, so I'm here in Southwest Colorado and I'm kind of been looking at the different junipers in this area and I wrote a plant profile on juniper a little while ago and been wanting to add these more southwestern junipers to the mix. Uh, and just a little recap of like what juniper is, where it grows, uh, what, what it's related to. So juniper is in the cypress family, not the pine family, and there's a couple different coniferous families out there, or evergreen families, not all conifers are evergreens and not all evergreens are conifers, but the cypress family is the plant family that juniper is in, and it's in that family too because of how it shares characteristics with other plants in the cypress family. And something else you would find maybe in that family is the swamp cypress that you see in the southeast and so juniper has flat needles and that's a actually no juniper has rounded scaled needles and your thujas other things in the cypress family thuja would be like the western red cedar thuja placata uh, has flattened scaled needles so The scaled needles thing is a big indicator in this in this family versus let's say the pine family or the redwoods are in the taxaceae family or no taxidaceae family and then you have you in the taxaceae family and redwoods have kind of a mix of scales and needles and yew trees have needles although yeah needles so that's, that's kind of what juniper looks like. And also we think that this is probably the Rocky Mountain juniper and the other tree here on the, this property that we're on right now is the, we think it's probably the onesie juniper. Although in the, in the West, there's a lot of different juniper species that kind of come together. Like in some areas of the world, there are less less variety of species so like in the northlands you'll likely find mostly the juniperus communis or all kinds of different variations of juniperus communis that's the scrubbier juniper where the needles actually look pretty different than that because they're often more spiky and a lot of junipers start off that way and then they turn into these scaled needles but the juniperus communis that's most it, it definitely stays more in that spiky state and the juniper's communist likes to grow low and in places where it's a lot colder or more acidic it'll inter grow with a lot of heath family things kind of in the rocks low and or up on the high mountain tops you'll find that even down into the, the south um, at the high mountain tops and uh, so it's like when you're in the northlands you can kind of assume that it's probably that species but then as you get down into the southwest and the west, into the midwest a little bit, there's a lot of species coming together. You have the Utah juniper, which is kind of in the Great Basin on the eastern Sierras. It comes over here. This area actually has a lot of different species, theoretically, that come together. You have the Rocky Mountain juniper, which is predominantly in the Rocky Mountains. You have the Sierra juniper, which is mainly in the Sierras and California and some in the Great Basin. Then you have the 1C juniper, which is very New Mexico, Arizona, Southwest Colorado, Utah. It's very Southwestern. And then even Juniper's communist is down here as well, that scrubby low one that I was speaking about. And then Juniper's virginiana, which is what I'm familiar with where I grew up, is predominantly in the Southeast and the Midwest, grows into the upper Midwest. It's a tree that uh, is very abundant. Many junipers are very abundant at this point in time because of fire suppression and because of the lack of tending of the forest in general. So this tree tends to thrive and become more abundant when other plants are less so. And when with the pinions, which is a tree out west that the junipers often are associated with, are dying back due to, oh this one right here, a lot of pine trees in general in the west have are having issues right now due to the pine bark beetle and pinion in the deeper southwest is having some issues with the pine bark beetle the juniper kind of starts to which it already grows with starts to kind of replace where the pinion was and it just doesn't have a problem expanding which is why sometimes it's called a weed tree 
<laughs> even though it's a native plant. It's called a weed tree in the southeast. It's called a weed tree sometimes in the southwest. In the Great Basin, it's called a weed tree because it's repopulating uh, back to its original or like at least a former abundance that it was in before we logged a bunch of them to burn uh, for various industrial practices in the <laughs> desert. So it's it's a very hardy tree and it's not going anywhere <laughs> these days and I think we should have relationships with it. But uh, yeah, out in the southeast it's considered a weed tree too um, because of really long periods of time of fire suppression. And there's a lot of other cultural associations that were traditionally had with the, the eastern juniper that kind of there's a lot of stories around its demonization that also have to do with the genocide of indigenous peoples in that area and also in the southwest the hate of this tree even though it's a native tree or the kind of like despise of it is associated with this sort of want to use the land in a certain way you know for cow cattle grazing or for um, certain kinds of agriculture and because it likes to spread and because it does so well especially because of the things that we've done to the land it uh it it seems like it it kind of um challenges the human ego or something you know <laughs> so junipers can definitely grow in really harsh environments and can thrive off of very little water you won't necessarily see them directly in a riparian area but you could and they're they're more likely to be on mesa tops so the spot where we're at right now is technically a mesa which is sort of a raised area up which has more wind, less water, usually um, it's, all, it's away from what we consider in the southwest riparian areas that are very distinct from these upper zones and so the juniper pinion forests really thrive up here and juniper especially really thrive in climates like this lots of wind, yeah, less rain and uh, I think that forming a relationship with juniper is a really great idea too because again they're really abundant and we need to use them and tend them and if we had more fire that was controlled and intentional i do think that there would be less junipers out there you know but i'm not necessarily an expert on control burns and fires so I, I would be curious if if there's anyone out there that knows what would happen if we did more of that on the land and all of the, the different ecologies that juniper finds itself kind of intermingling intermingling and weaving together across turtle island which is where i'm kind of localized uh like what would fire do in different places you know those are the questions that i ask a lot because how it would be in the in kentucky versus arkansas versus kansas versus here in southwest colorado versus down in new mexico it would be different in each of those places what what kind of uh you know what what the land would look like after that so there's a lot more to say about juniper there's a lot more we could go into about how to identify each species which maybe at some point I'll get into more specifically. You know, there's different barks, there's different seed uh, numbers, there's different, uh, the fruits look different, the needles look kind of different, so, and they kind of have different, like, habits, how they grow like this or like this or like this. <laughs> so um, that would be a different video for a different time. But uh, I wrote the plant profile on Juniper a few years ago, and I'm really excited to maybe add in some southwesterly species, just a little more uh, info about them to kind of expand that profile. It's already huge as it is, but I just am so excited about juniper and how how much it kind of blends into so many different places. You know, it, 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 it obviously is associated with the pinion, paired with the pinion a lot in the west, and often it doesn't need the pinion, you know, uh, to be anywhere you know so yeah just how it kind of merges in all these ecologies is really fascinating to me and so and how we could probably use it for food and medicine in a lot of different ways is also really cool and kind of integrate it into our culture so uh i think that's all i'm gonna say about it right now and then just gabe's pushing me to to start talking about this plant more instead of just writing about it so i thought i would just say hi and introduce you know a little bit of like these right here in the context of this place so <laughs>